A very warm welcome from St Isidore's Catholic Church here in Bigger to everyone watching this video. We're so sorry we cannot welcome you in person to this year's Doors Open Day, but we hope this short video piques your interest in our church building. My name is Ian Maxfield and I'm a parishioner of St Isidore's. During this video, I'm going to take you on a wee tour of the church part of the building. But before I start, perhaps it is worth saying a little bit about the history of Catholicism here in Bigger. In the early days of Christianity, the now A702 route, which passes through Bigger, served as a pilgrim route between St Ninian's Shrine at Whithorn to St Kentigan's base in Glasgow and St Cuthbert's missions in Iona and Lindisfarne. The earliest mention of a church in Bigger is in a charter dated 1165. Another 13th century record tells us that the Bigger church was built of stone and dedicated to St Nicholas. Malcolm, Lord Fleming, was responsible for the building of what is now known as Bigger Kirk in 1545, the last collegiate church to be built in Scotland before the Reformation in 1560. The charter for this new church was under the title and invocation of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary and to the glory of St Ninian and St Nicholas. Following the Reformation in 1560, the Catholic Church went underground and there is no official record of any Catholic activity in the area until 1849. In the years that followed the restoration of the Catholic Church in Scotland, Priests in the area would travel huge distances to celebrate Mass in local houses and public halls in the area. In 1931, the parish of Bigger was the focus of a new development in the social history of the Catholic Church. The Catholic Land Movement established a centre and a small church at Broadfield, just up the road in Symington. It was dedicated to St Isidore the farmer, who, not surprisingly, is the patron saint of farmers. Sadly, due to low funds, this closed a few years later. And that brings us to this St Isidore's. Father Edward Malumby was the priest who oversaw the closure of Broadfield and the beginning of the new church in Bigger. Breeze Hill, this building, was originally built for Dr. Kello, whose brother and sister founded the local hospital. The church purchased Breeze Hill in May 1936, probably as a retiral home for the most reverend Donald McIntosh, who was Archbishop of Glasgow at the time. In May 1937, Father Malumby asked if the house could be used as a church, as mass had been held in the municipal hall for a year. Monsignor Daly, the Vicar General at the time, agreed. And in this respect, this house, now church, serves as a reminder of how the early Christians, who as well as gathering at synagogues, would gather in people's homes to celebrate Mass. It serves as a constant reminder, reinforced by these times when the celebration of public Mass is restricted, that the church is not just a building, but a family. If you would like to know more about our history, please visit our webpage and join our Facebook group. Links will be shown at the end of this video. So let's tour the church. Perhaps the most notable feature of this building is the stained glass windows behind me. Installed in the church in March 2004, they were designed and made by Roland Mitten, whose work includes the memorial window in Dunblane Cathedral for the children of the Dunblane Massacre. Roland worked with Father Michael Marr, who was the parish priest at the time, on the design which features Christ as the Good Shepherd side by side with Saint Isidore the Farmer. In the background of the Good Shepherd window is Kuta Fell, and in the Saint Isidore window is Tinto Hill, two dominant local summits. Biblical references were incorporated visually rather than verbally, with the Good Shepherd carrying home the lost sheep and Isidore sowing the seed among thorns and thistles on rocky ground and good ground. As a personal touch, Father Michael's two dogs, Sancho, his golden retriever, and Lady, his flat coat retriever, were also included for posterity. 
The altar, as with any altar in a Catholic church, is a feature worth noting. A parishioner made the mahogany altar in 1957 from an old dresser, and interestingly, it contains no nails. Catholic churches will also feature the Stations of the Cross, a series of images depicting Jesus on Good Friday. The images and accompanying prayers are used to meditate on the crucifixion. Here in St Isidore's, the 14 images can be found around the church. These images were rescued from a Catholic hospice and chapel in Lanark, which faced closure. The church was extended in 1993 to include what had been a conservatory. The original conservatory already leaked, but in 1990 a petrol tanker fire just outside the church melted the putty and the windows slipped. Parishioners really did use umbrellas until a new roof was installed. By the way, the fire was so bad that several houses in the area were evacuated and a foam tender was deployed from Glasgow Airport to extinguish the flames. The church now seats around 100 people in relatively dry conditions. That is until the priest douses us in holy water on Easter Sunday. There is so much more that we can share with you, uh, but we've been instructed to keep this video short. If you would like to know more about St Isidore's, its history, or would just like to know more about the community and Mass times, please visit our website and join our Facebook group. Details at the bottom of the screen. Goodbye.